Welcome to my lecture online. In this video and the ones to come, we're going to talk about the coefficient of restitution. We're going to figure out what it is and how useful it is to know what it is and to be able to apply it to various concepts of conservation of momentum. It's definitely related to the conservation of momentum. The definition is that it is related, and we're talking about the coefficient of restitution, it is related but not equal to the amount of the original kinetic energy that is then restored to the objects after the collision. So it's a relationship between how much energy we started with and how much energy we ended up with. And it's basically the ratio of the differences in the velocity after the collision divided by the difference in the velocity before the collision. So it's not exactly equal to the kinetic energy before and after, it's equal to the ratios of the difference of the velocities after to the velocities before the collision. And we'll see later on and how that relates to the kinetic energies involved. Let's say here that we have a ball that's dropping from a particular height. By the time it reaches the floor, it is moving at 8 meters per second in a downward direction. After it hits the floor, it's moving at 4 meters per second in an upward direction. You can see since it's not moving as fast after the collision as it did before the collision, it has lost some of its energy. What portion of the energy is then restored back in the object as it leaves the floor? Now in this case, there are indeed two objects, the ball and the floor, and of course the velocity of the floor in both cases before and after the collision will be zero. So let's figure out what the coefficient of restitution is in a case like this. It's a very simple case. So here, let's take 1 as the floor and 2 as the ball. So this would be equal to V1 final after the collision, that would be 0, minus the velocity of the ball after the collision, which is 4, divided by the velocity of the floor before the collision, which is 0, minus the velocity of the ball before the collision, which would be a minus 8. So in the numerator, we get 0 minus 4, which is minus 4 divided by 0 minus a minus 8, which is a plus 8. Of course, since we're taking the absolute values, that ends up being 1 half. So that is really the ratio of the differences of the velocities after the collision divided by the difference in the velocities before the collision, and we're taking the absolute value of those differences. So that's what we mean by the coefficient of restitution, which means that not all of the energy is restored, it doesn't mean that half the energy is restored, by the way, and we'll look at that later. We just know that not all of it is restored and not all of it is lost. So let's look at the extreme cases. So in the extreme examples, let's take the example where the ball does not go back up in the air. It falls to the ground and it stays there, which means that the velocity final of the ball is equal to zero. If we then find the coefficient of restitution, we get c is equal to, so that would be the final velocity of the floor minus the final velocity of the ball divided by the initial would still be 0 minus a minus 8. So in this case, we get 0 divided by 8, which is 0. So if the coefficient of restitution is 0, that means none of the energy was restored and all the energy was lost. In the other extreme case, that the velocity final of the ball equals in magnitude the velocity before the collision of the ball, in this case that would be a positive 8 meters per second, then the coefficient of restitution would be 0 minus 8 divided by 0 minus a minus 8. Of course, we take the absolute values of that, which would be 8 divided by 8, which is equal to 1 which means that the coefficient restitution equals 1 simply means that all the energy was restored back in the objects after the collision and none of the energy was lost. Basically, this would represent an elastic collision and this would represent a completely inelastic collision where all the energy was lost in the collision. Of course, when we have a coefficient restitution equals to 1 half, that doesn't exactly mean that we lost half the energy. You'll see in a moment, or I should say, you'll see in the next several videos, what we do with values between zero and one, but at least it does mean that it's partial elastic and partially inelastic, meaning some of the energy was lost. Of course, the closer this number is to zero, the more the energy is lost, the closer this number is to one, the less energy is lost, and that you can go with. 
So now at least we know what we mean by the coefficient of restitution. In the next several videos, we'll get a better understanding how we can actually utilize that and how it's actually related to the differences in the kinetic energies of the objects. And that's how it's done.